Love where you live is the message that greets you once you visit phase one of Jamuhuri Estate. It's a phrase that the developer believed in when construction of the estate began nearly half a century ago. And it's an ideology that the residents here have bought into for the past 50 years. But that philosophy would face its greatest test come the mid-1990s when officials at the Nairobi City Council decided to sell off portions of land in Jamuhuri Estate meant for recreational purposes. What we now know as Jamuhuri Estate Phase 2 was initially open land belonging to the residents of Jamuhuri Phase 1. Now the area is a sharp contrast from the Jamuhuri of 1969. It boasts of tall commercial structures comprising of unregulated buildings. In the mid-1990s, the Nairobi City Council either legally or fraudulently subdivided much of the open spaces in Jamuhuri Estate into 53 subplots and offered them up for sale. This had been done so secretively, the residents of Jamuhuri were not aware. By the time they got wind of the situation, however, three years had since passed and those who had bought the land had begun construction. The Jamuhuri Estate Residents Welfare Society was quickly formed and the group moved to court on the 17th of November 1999, seeking an injunction which was ultimately granted by the courts on the 12th of July 2000. An injunction is hereby issued against the defendant, who was then the Nairobi City Council, and the allottees of the plots from proceeding with development of the said open spaces until the final determination of the suit or until further orders of this honorable court read the directive signed by the then deputy registrar in the high court 18 years since that directive was issued and Jamuhuri's open spaces are now covered with the red bricked roofs of the apartment complexes that have since replaced the empty space. Because the case is still active in court, Area Code was unable to get officials of the Estates Welfare Society to comment on the matter, but we were able to get our hands on a number of letters written by the Estates residents to the National Lands Commission complaining about continued construction in land that already has dispute. The National Lands Commission, in a letter dated the 11th of December 2015, to the then County Executive Committee member in charge of lands, a Mr. Tom Odongo, would respond by stating, quote, The Commission has carried out a site inspection and found out that in spite of the said court injunction, construction of a multi-story building is still ongoing. The commission recommends the county government to stop the development. This is the controversial development that the National Lands Commission was talking about. Three years later, the building is up and running and already occupied by tenants, despite the fact that not only was a court injunction clearly ignored, the developer did not adhere to safety standards set out by the National Construction Authority. This picture shows the said building in its initial stages constructed right next to a masonet in Jamuhuri Estate. Despite several attempts by the National Construction Authority to halt the process, the six-story building was completed Never mind the fact that it had destroyed an adjacent house, leaving cracks on the walls, even inside the house itself. Uh, my name is Stanley Wambu Gadenya. But for Stanley Gadenya, who bought land here back in 1996, the problem is only evident against a number of those who illegally acquired land here and openly flouted set housing guidelines. Because when we, construct, we were constructing these houses, they were meant to be for residential houses, only one story building. And thereafter, when people came in big numbers, others, uh, they constructed them to be commercial buildings. 
as an, unlike what the city council plan was initially for the only for the residents only but there's nothing we can do but i think those of these kind of things which are happened is due to the corruption because if initially and there was a certain kind of a plan how we should stay here with the families and then somebody else come and convert the, resi the residential houses into a commercial building then we found it is not safe i we find that there are some bylaws which are violated which was not according to the initial plan which was there. This is now the face of Jamuhuri Phase 2. Gadenya's longtime friend and neighbor, John Otieno, says that the intention for construction in Phase 2 were good, only that the city council never followed up in adherence to construction rules. The two gentlemen are among Phase 2's pioneer residents for an estate that quickly grew from 1998 john moved into his new home immediately after retirement in 2002 back then the area was rather deserted when i came here this place was bushy it was complete bush in fact outside there there were several mugumo trees which i had to to remove in order to construct this place so it was a um, it was a uh, part of Ngong forest and uh, where we are now i'm told it was also part of a muslim cemetery so the the the, the muslims used to bury their people here so where we are we are on a cemetery the population of jamuhuri estate especially phase 2 has grown drastically and as a result, water problems are abound. Water is a problem. We only get water once a week, and at times we do fail to get. So you must have a lot of reservoirs so that you can store your own water. If you have children, it's a challenge. Because you see, if you have many children to keep water for a whole week, you will have to buy in between the week. So it has been very hard in the side of water. And then the time that I came, water was able to go up to the storage tanks. By then, the city council storage tanks were working. Now, almost for each and every house, they are leaking, so you can't store the water there. So we were forced to buy our own tanks to store up the roof and then some other storages. So water has been a very big challenge. You have to buy a, a pump so that you can pump your own water. You know, this is one of my toilets. You can see. Oh, no, no. Nothing. There's nothing. It's been like that for how long? It has been like this for... for, for this one has been here. For, it has been like this for the whole week. We got water once last week. Mm. So when it got finished, it has been like this. Dry taps. It is it, it dry, you can see. And even my, in the kitchen. You can see this is my kitchen. Sorry for the mess. No, it's a kitchen. <laughs> yeah. You can see there's nothing. Mm. There's nothing. Even the uh, sahanis, they are piling. And you're not guaranteed when next it will come? We are not guaranteed. Unless we go there one, two times, three times, then it is, we are at their mercy. They open for us when they want. You can spend even 4,000. Like now in my own house, you can spend even 4,000. Just yes. imagine. Yes. Food. Mm -hmm. Because you see, you'll pay that studying bill for the city council, and then you'll buy. In between, you will be forced to buy water. And the bill comes, whether water came or not. Yes, you'll have bill. Do you receive water bills? Yeah, they come and see, we tell them. Because honestly, you cannot pay for something. You know, we, we normally buy water. We go get water. That's only our problem. Water. In Nairobi, you're staying in Nairobi, a city without water. Mm. Is, do you think the problem is because this is an old estate? You know, these are one of those pioneer estates in Nairobi, mm -hmm. Jamhuri. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is the genesis of the water problems here? Huh? You see, like uh, the, the stories here which are coming up. You know, this place is supposed to have a limit of five stories, eh? But now it's meant that till seven, eight. And then what one chukwa maji? Like in Kibira, you know in Kibira is a slum, but there's no water in Akosa there. There's this big pipe which passes 
uh, uh, supplying water in uh, showground and Langata barracks. Here we are not supposed to miss water at all. So wakati na puja tunambi wati there is no water. I think there is some, there's something wrong somewhere. But even though the estate's challenges remain, its history indeed cannot be denied, for it is one of sharp contrast of one side seeking to retain its initial image and stature, and another portraying the constant evolution of the Nairobi city life. Either way you look at it, no doubt the estate that will be celebrating its 50th anniversary in 2019 is highly unlikely to be faced by either time or people. For Area Code, I am Timothy Otieno.